Shalom. I'm Rabbi Josh Caruso from Anshe Chesed Fairmount Temple, and um, I'm honored to, to be here with Sally's family today um, and to walk with them to Sally's final resting place. And um, at this time, um, I know the family is so comforted uh, by you all. Um, so just a, just a quick note that'll, that'll help us maintain um, the solemnity and the, um, the honor of the service is um, to just uh, check your phones and, and to make sure that um, they're either put on um, uh, vibrate or they're just turned off entirely so, uh, so we can just uh, be in this moment of the service together. In the words of Ecclesiastes, a season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven time for dancing, a time for wailing, a time for birthing and a time for dying, a time for speaking, a time for silence, a time for seeking, a time for losing. The time of mourning is a complicated time, filled with many emotions and memories, both bitter and sweet. We begin our service with the recitation of psalms and prayers, thus linking Sally's life with the 3,000-year-old tradition of the people Israel and the eternity of God. I invite you to join with me in the recitation of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Eshet Chayel Miyimsa, what a precious find, is an Eshet Chayel, a woman of valor. Her worth is far beyond rubies. Her husband Bob put his confidence in her. He lacked no good thing. She was good to him, never bad all the days of her life. She opened her hand to the needy. She extended it to the poor. She was clothed with strength and splendor. Sally looked to the future cheerfully. She opened her mouth with wisdom. Her tongue was guided by kindness. She oversaw the activities of her household. and She never ate the bread of idleness. Today, her children Todd and Scott, they come forward and bless her, and Bob praises her. He would say, many women have done superbly, but you, Sally, you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a God-revering woman is much to be praised. Extol her for the fruit of her hand, wherever people gather. Her deeds speak her praise. And today we carry on this lasting legacy. Her deeds continue to resonate in the hearts and the minds of all those who knew her. And today I know her son Scott, on behalf of the family, would like to share some words about his precious mom.
Thank you, Rabbi Caruso. Monday, December 4th, 1933, Bernard and Zelda Zipser brought a baby girl into the world. It was their only child, and they named her Sally. And their love brought my mom joy. Fast forward to 1955. A mutual friend of my parents thought they should meet. When my dad called to ask out my mom, she replied, I'm playing Maj. Call me tomorrow. <laughs> Click. Thank goodness my father was undeterred. He called her the next day, asked her out. They started dating, fell in love, and got married on July 6, 1958. And for the next 61 and a half years, their marriage served as a model for my brother and I to emulate. They bickered from time to time, but their love for each other never wavered. And throughout her life, my father brought her joy. January 23, 1961 was truly a joyous event, for my mom gave birth to me. Eight years later, my parents decided to have another child, and my brother Todd was born. He also brought her joy, not as much as me, but I may be biased. Todd married Kathy in 1993, and I married Lisa in 1998. And Mom loved them like the daughters she never had. And they, too, brought her joy. And then came the grandchildren. First, Zach. Then, Emily. And last but not least, Ryan. Her love for them was endless. Their academic and athletic achievements brought her ultimate joy. My first imprinted memory of my mom was her teaching me to read when I was four years old. I fondly remember our trips to the public library at Cedar Center, enrolling me in the summer reading programs, encouraging me to read as many books as possible. She gave me a thirst for knowledge and a curiosity to learn, traits that I still utilize to this day. I admired her fierce loyalty and love for family and friends. While mom was in hospice, she had this one aide. Her name was Pat, who took care of her. My father liked to joyfully play around and kid with Pat. And one day, without provocation, my mom shouted out, you be nice to her. She's my friend. Pat told me after mom died that mom's defense of her was one of the fondest memories of her career. She took great pride in what she wore and how she looked, and she tried to extend that to me. My uncle Shell, or Butch, loves to tell me the story of how we went to a family event and mom dressed me in this pristine white sailor suit. And then he took me to the biggest mud puddle he could find and told me to have at it. And I did. And that white sailor suit quickly turned to a ugly, muddy brown and I was covered in it from head to toe. My mother was mortified. I'm surprised my uncle is still with us to this day. I can guarantee you there was not much joy for her that day. She was meticulous with her home, everything in its place. But having two boys doing their best to disrupt things drove her crazy. Those were the times that she wished she had daughters. 
She had this sixth sense, the ability to know if we ate something or touched something or moved something without her permission. To this day, I still don't know how she did it. I inherited her desire to keep things clean, much to my wife's dismay at times. For my mom, it was all about her hair. Her weekly visits to her good friend Rita Perlman, whose masterful skills as a beautician were greatly appreciated and brought her joy. And when it came to my mom's hair, she went to great lengths to make sure that rain and wind were to be avoided by any means necessary. I remember going to play bingo with my mom from time to time. Numbers are being called out in rapid succession. She's furiously marking numbers with her various colors of dabbers, keeping in mind the various patterns for each game. Her precision would make a computer envious. I was awed by her ability to play 60 games at one time while I'm struggling to try to keep up with 12, and she would help me. You missed a number. Grab that one. Her winning brought her joy. She enjoyed watching and listening to Indians games. When she would watch the Browns on TV, she would turn down the sound and listen to the game on the radio. For me, I was a media buyer back in the day. And don't worry if you don't know what that entails because I don't think my mom fully understood. But I got to take her to the debut of Jacobs Field on April 4th, 1994 when the Cleveland Indians played the Seattle Mariners. I remember us sitting in the second row of the lower bleachers in left field. The bright sun keeping us warm on a cold day. It brought her joy. I remember coming home Friday nights after being out with my friends to find my mom watching Don Kirshner's rock concert. She knew Ozzy Osbourne, Johnny Winter, uh, David Bowie, among others. And take it from me, from someone who knows about Nielsen ratings, a suburban Jewish housewife in her 40s was not part of the show's core demographic. My mom enjoyed to cook brisket and jello mold. She did multi-layer jello mold. She did various colors depending on the occasion. But my favorite memory was coming home from Hebrew school on Saturday afternoons where she made me pizza bagels. It didn't require great culinary skill, but sometimes it's the simple things that bring us pleasure. One of my very few skill sets is making people laugh, but my mom was a tough customer. So I was very proud when I succeeded. When I failed, I knew that I could rely on Monday nights at 8 p.m. when she watched her favorite television show, ALF. Yes, a show about an alien portrayed by a puppet and his hilarious antics would put my mom in stitches and it truly brought her joy. My mom was a fighter. She didn't let her diagnosis of cancer in February get her down. She didn't complain about her treatments, even when she lost her hair. She didn't ask people to feel sorry for her. My last cherished memory of my mother was December 4th, her last birthday. My dad, Todd, Kathy, and I gathered around her bed in her hospice unit to celebrate. She was eating fizzle, Twizzlers, two-fisted, and in between managed to eat the generic version of Lucky Charms marshmallows. Todd, Kathy, and I played war with her. From time to time, she would, we'd make her count the cards that she wore on, and she did it sometimes in the wrong numerical sequence. And Kathy would make good-natured fun of her, saying that mom reminded her of her preschoolers trying to learn how to count. It made her laugh. It brought her joy. And here we are today. We're here to mourn her. We're here to honor her. And for each and every one of you in this room, in your own way, 
you brought my mother joy and I thank you and I truly hope that my mom Sally Khan brought joy to you tribute, Scott, to your mom, the amazing wife of Bob, and a devoted mother to you and Todd, and their loving wives, Lisa and Kathy. But perhaps the title Sally was most proud of was that of grandmother to Zach, Emily, and Ryan. Mimi was grateful to have lived a full life of more than eight decades that culminated in her cheering on those kids in just about everything they did. She was a keeper of memories, an organized collector of the bits and pieces of life that shaped her, and items that she just couldn't leave behind. Today, we too are collectors of memories, memories that have been lifted up today. That we have no intention of leaving those memories behind. Sally shaped lives with her loving presence and concern for others. Her steadfast attention to even the smallest of details and her living by the golden rule. The only child born to Bernard and Zelda Zipser. She grew up in Cleveland Heights graduated from Heights High and headed off to Ohio State only to return after two years to Cleveland. It was soon after returning that Sally was introduced to Bob through his friend, Jack. And Jack was intent on the two of them meeting and in short order, they began clicking Bob's words. And of course, as Scott shared, when Bob first called, Sally was a bit dismissive. But after the wedding in July 1958, Sally and Bob were peas in a pod. And they remained in town, and began a family. Scott and Todd happily recall a mom who brought delicious foods to the dinner table. Scott, you shared some brisket and matzo ball soup and latkes, and yes, those jello molds. She ran a beautiful home. She ran a tight ship. She was a perfectionist, which gave her a little bit of a sharpness. But she would uncannily know when an item was moved out of place for sure. And if food was brought into the house and consumed in one of her son's bedrooms, it didn't matter if all the evidence was removed, she would still know. But Sally had a booming life with Bob and friends. Bingo and bowling and cards and others kept her good friends close to her. She and Bob enjoyed traveling, shared a love for gambling when they got the chance to do it locally or even going to Las Vegas. She was a snappy dresser, always looking put together and well coiffed. And of course, yes, Scott, her vanity of her hair was well known. This would be a day when she would probably not want to go outside at all if she just had her hair done. She kept up with her grandkids' lives, eager to learn about their successes. There were vacations to Mexico, Putacana, and Disney, and Sally felt blessed to take it all in, every minute of it. She even abandoned smoking after decades because she wanted to be around longer for those beautiful kids, for her beautiful kids. They each shared some memories. Zach said, 
she was always so giving of her love to all of us. One of my fond memories is that in addition to a hug and a kiss, she would always give me the thumbs up sign when she would say goodbye to me. She continued this all the way through her last days in hospice. Emily wrote, Mimi's famous jello molds. They were a staple at any family gathering. You could always count on that on the on, on the jello. Her rule was whose ever birthday it was got to pick the color. For all other events, I, Emily, got to make the call. And Ryan said, Mimi and I shared a love for barbecue ribs. Our favorite place to eat ribs was famous Dave's in North Olmsted. I would always get the full slab and Mimi would get the small order and always ask if I was going to be able to finish all that. I always did. Thank you each for sharing your memories. We know they only touch the surface. Yes, strong-willed, never one to complain. Sally entered hospice a couple of months back after enduring the debilitating effects of chemotherapy and immunotherapy. And even so, Sally maintained her dignity through and through. Only a little over a month ago, as Scott mentioned, the family came to visit for her 86th birthday. It was probably the last really good day for her and as you've heard, she sho soaked up the joy as if she knew that maybe there would be few chances in the future to do so again. All she needed was her family around and some really tasty food. She particularly loved the beautiful cupcakes she got with the special frosting on top. You know, Todd and Kathy talked about Zach's Herculean efforts to get back from his bowl game. And soon after, Sally was able to let go as much as we didn't want her to. Everybody knew it was time. And it doesn't matter how many years you can count up in this life. It's never the right time. But we will be hard pressed, hard pressed to let go of the many memories that linger in our hearts. Those will remain. Zichrona Livracha. May Sally's memory forever be a blessing. And let us together say, Amen. We pause for a moment as we consider. Sally's life, the, the gifts she brought, the piece of the puzzle that she, she brought to each one of our lives. Let us pause for just a moment. Please rise as you are able for the memorial prayer. Amale Rahami. El Male Rahami Shochein Bam Romi Hamse Menucha Nehona Tahat Kanfe Hashina Bemalot Kedoshim Mutorim. Kezor Rakiamazirim et Nishmat Sara Lea Bat Binyamin Shalha Leola Maha Began Eden Tehe Menuchata Ana Bararachami Hasti Reha Beseter Kanafeha Leola Mi Utsror bitsror achayim et nishmataha Adonai unachalataha Vetanuach b'shalom Al mishkava venomar Amen Yom alei 
Rachamim, exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure to the soul of Sally Khan. She has gone to her eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May her soul be bound up in the bond of life. May Sally rest in peace and let us say, Amen. As we turn to the conclusion of our service today, we will move from the sanctuary to Mount Olive Cemetery for the burial. And following the burial, family will receive friends today until 4 p.m. at Anche Chesed Fairmount Temple, 23737 Fairmount Boulevard in Beechwood. Today again at Fairmount Temple until 4, and then Sunday, January 12th, this Sunday, the family will receive friends at Kathy and Todd's residence, 20033. Colleen Court in Strongsville. On Sunday in Strongsville, the family will be sitting from 1 to 4 p.m. Friends who wish may contribute to the Maltz Hospice House in Beechwood.